I think when it comes to aim training, people are always looking for the next cool method to use or a pro's opinion to confirm their own beliefs. And in the process, they come out with a ton of different advice, but no clue on what's actually useful. Some people suggest a training range, others DM. Some say aim trainers are useful, some say it's useless. Some people don't even aim train and just play the game. I mean, the list goes on. So in this video, I'm gonna try to break down aim training as a concept and give you some key insights on how you should approach aim training instead of simply some aim routine, because what's good or useful is different for everyone. As always, I'm Royal G, a Radiant player and coach who enjoys explaining lesser known insights on fundamental topics. I also stream daily and enjoy giving advice, so feel free to come say hi on Twitch. Also, one crucial aspect of improving as a player is finding the right guidance and the right environment to flourish. And since I'm currently taking a break from private coaching, I wanted to lead you guys to another place where you can find top quality coaching, Gosu Academy. Not only do they offer amazing resources for improvement like advanced theory and VOD review classes taught by professional coaches, you also get to learn and play Valorant at a team level through weekly rank-based 10 mans that are also guided by pro coaches. And if that doesn't already sound like an amazing place for players trying to improve, what if I told you that every month Gosu Academy also invites a coach from a franchise team to give an exclusive lecture? So not only will you be able to learn from the literal best the industry has to offer, you also get to meet and grow with a group of similarly ranked players who are all just as passionate about Valorant as you are. And it may sound crazy, but there's even more. The first 50 people that sign up with my code ROYALG will also get access to a 30-day free trial. That's basically 30 days of free coaching from pros. So don't miss out on this amazing opportunity and sign up for Gosu Academy today. Thank you Gosu Academy for sponsoring this video. Let's talk aim training. Whenever people talk about aim training advice or methods, this question gets thrown around a lot, which is, are aim trainers useful? I think many of you guys watching probably have an answer to this question because it's such a common consideration for people trying to get better at FPS games. Things like Kovacs or aim labs offer a big selection of training scenarios, but one large gripe people have with that is that they're unrealistic. I mean, could you imagine using grid shot in a Valorant game? Probably not, but that doesn't really answer the question fully. I mean, sure, it's unrealistic, but does that make it pointless? To answer this, let me ask you this instead. Why do athletes go to the gym? Some of you guys might see the connection I'm drawing already. Could you imagine a basketball player doing a deadlift while playing? Of course not. There's basically no situation where a deadlift is applicable. But at the same time, pretty much every serious basketball player would go to the gym on a regular basis. Why? To build up their physique. It's much harder to play or even learn a physical sport without having a strong physique. And the same applies to aim. The main misconception that people make is to assume that practicing aim trainers is somehow directly tied to better performance in FPS games. Using aim trainers is like going to the gym. You have a ton of different tools for training specific parts of your aim, kind of like dumbbells and a bench press or a squat rack, but none of those things are necessarily going to be able to apply one-to-one -to, -one to performance in a sport. For anyone who hasn't gone to a gym before or doesn't get what I mean still, I'm basically pointing out that aim training doesn't have to be exactly the same as how you would aim in game for you to improve. Instead, you should treat aim trainers as a way to build a better physique which lets you train aim to a higher level. Once you make that critical connection, the rest of the topics I'll be covering will all make a lot more sense. The first on this list would be to take that comparison and generalize it to other things, like the training range and deathmatch and even things like OSU or browser aim trainers. If we do, we can very quickly see why each would help you improve in different ways. The training range lets you work on your practical aim and movement similar to going to the basketball court where you could train your technique and learn to do things like dribble and shoot the ball properly. Meanwhile, deathmatching lets you practice dueling and gunplay, kind of like doing some shooting drills or 1v1s on a court. And things like Osu are not quite related to FPS specifically, but could help you gain more mouse control in general, kind of like playing another physical sport. And browser aim trainers, well, I would just compare them to playing the basketball mini games in the arcade or at the carnival, I guess. Might not be the most useful, but you could technically improve with it. And of course, going into a ranked game is like playing an actual basketball game against other players. Notice how all these different tools have their own uses for someone trying to improve. Just as much as you would need to go to the gym, you also need to practice shooting drills and play actual matches to be a great basketball player. Just as you need to play ranked to improve, you also need to hop into the training range or practice in aim trainers. But of course, some of you guys might be thinking right now, okay, but why does X pro player not do aim labs or play death matches? Which leads me to the next point, understanding how improvement works. I think everyone can get behind the idea that improving aim is kind of like leveling up in a game. You train, you get EXP, and as you get more EXP, your aim gets better. This isn't very hard to realize, but because seeing progress with aim in a game like Valorant is kind of subjective and hard to track, people have a subconscious idea that if they aren't training all the right things, they're somehow losing XP or getting worse. But this is not true, or at least it's mostly untrue. 
Yes, there are some things that may make you play worse or create bad habits, but none of that actually stops you from improving. In fact, the fear of practicing the wrong things and wasting time is probably what holds you back more than just going to practice, well, anything. The truth is, any type of aim training can more or less help you improve, or give you XP. Some people play grid shot all day and get better, even though the community thinks it's largely useless. At the same time, some players also just play the game constantly and improve naturally. So what's the difference? Well, it's efficiency. Say you're training in a video game and you're killing monsters to gain experience. You can choose to fight against slimes or you can choose to fight rock golems. In this case, let's just say you get around 1000 experience an hour from fighting slimes and you get 2000 experience an hour from golems. Which one would you choose? Obviously golems, right? It's more experience objectively. But you suddenly see someone who is higher level than you say, well, I just trained on slimes to level up. And you start to doubt yourself and think, maybe slimes are actually better. I mean, he's higher level than me, so he must know more, right? Right? But what you didn't realize was, that guy plays the game much more than you do. While you're online for 3 hours a day, he's grinding for 9 plus hours. So in the course of one day, you gain 6,000 experience, but he's pushing 10,000 or more. If you trained the same amount of time he did, you would easily be in the 20,000s, but you didn't and you didn't draw the connection. So you go train slimes and now you're just getting 3000 experience a day without knowing any better. What I mean here is efficiency is often overlooked because we as people are results oriented. Generally, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. In this case, talent is just another word for efficiency. If someone who isn't very efficient with practice plays five times the amount of hours you do, it's very hard to be better than them, even if you practice very efficiently. But if you practice very efficiently and you play similar hours to the other guy, you would easily surpass him over the course of time. And of course, there's other factors. But what I'm trying to explain here is that even though some players get to a high rank only using the training range or only playing the game, they aren't necessarily efficient. They're just passionate and have a lot of time. But had they done things more efficiently or had better guidance, they could have gotten much further in that same amount of time. So that leads us to the question, what is efficient in aim training? There isn't much science or numbers that can tell us conclusively that aim training is most efficient by doing X, Y, or Z aim routine. That's also part of the reason why players have so many mixed opinions and misconceptions about aim training overall, because everyone has different experiences. I'm not gonna say that I understand what's more efficient or what's not, because I could just be any any other high rank player who substituted efficiency for passion. But I tend to think that taking a logical approach is always better than blindly navigating through everything, so that's why I like to draw connections and make analogies. And when it comes to thinking logically, I'm extremely confident, which is why I think drawing the connection between aim training and sports is the secret to understanding efficient aim training. I mean, sports science is exceptionally well studied and holds a ton of research and insights about optimal performance in sports and physical activities. And while Valorant isn't a super physical sport, there's still a very very physical part of FPS games, which is mechanical skill. As a player who grew up playing sports and has also played FPS games at a semi-pro level, a large part of my approach to improving at FPS games has influences from how I learned to play sports. Was it the most efficient? I don't know, but it made a lot of sense and therefore felt a lot better to me than just watching a random aim routine on YouTube and thinking, this is the golden ticket. Don't get me wrong, I still watched those videos and tried out routines, then took what felt useful for me. Advice doesn't always benefit you, but you can always benefit from advice. Something I want to touch on before we end this video is a distinction that needs to be covered for you to actually have efficient practice, which is the fact that warm up and training are two very different things. I know some people like to treat their warm up as aim training, but that usually can go two directions. One, you aim train for a short amount of time because you're on a mindset of warming up to play ranked, or two, you aim train and put in significant effort and now you're tired or fatigued and play worse in ranked. Athletes don't go to the gym before playing a match, and I think it also doesn't make sense to tire yourself before playing ranked. And at the same time, if you only aim train for like 10 minutes as a warm up, you're not really getting much out of aim training anyways. I think this distinction is very important because people who don't draw the line between aim training and warm up tend to start thinking that aim training doesn't help them improve or something, because either they're fatigued for the actual game, or they didn't actually aim train. Anyways, I think there's a lot more to aiming than just insights, but in my opinion, insights is much more important for people to push past their limits, and also for beginners to see the bigger picture. I'll be making more videos like these in the future, so if you're interested, make sure to stay tuned. Take it easy.